Hi guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. So today we will be talking some method on how to maximize the space in the garden. You may think that I have a big garden, but honestly, I feel like I never have enough space to grow. And if you look closely, I grow a lot of vegetables vertically and every edges, every corner is packed. Especially in summer season, there are a lot of vegetables that you can grow vertical and save a lot of space. So I grow uh, all my tomato on trellis and then I also grow some beans. Uh, most are pole bean, wing beans and long bean. And for cucurbit family, cucurbit family such as um, cucumbers, squash, summer squash, winter squash, and also zucchini, I grow those using some sort of either trellises or stake to grow them vertically to save a lot of space. And growing vertically not only have you maximize the space but also provide optimal yield and better pest management and make the harvest much easier. And another benefit of growing vertically, the crop are less prone to leaf fungal such as powdery mildew. It's a big problem in my garden, okay, for powdery mildew. And fruit rot, because of the fruit are not in contact with the soil. And also it's allow the air to move freely through the plants. So less moisture build up that could lead to other diseases. All right, so let's talk about tomato. As you guys know that there are two popular type of tomatoes, determinate tomato, which is the tomato will grow small and you don't need any support. And another type is indeterminate tomato, my favorite type. Uh, the tomato will grow as one and you need some sort of support. And I love growing indeterminate tomato because it's produced all year round, especially in my zone 10B. And because of I grow this tomato vertically, it's allow me to ignore the spacing rule. In this space, I planted three tomato plants close together and all the tomatoes will grow and hang over this trellis arch. Uh, so yeah, and I prune more often. And for the, uh, this side, I also grow a, a couple uh, variety of tomatoes. Uh, they all will maybe meet in the center of the arch. And this one I planted in container. I grow a lot of tomato in container for this year. And using this trellis, I will link all of the supply in this video in the description below for you guys. So these trellis have a lot. And it's very affordable uh, and all the tomato that I planted in container using this trellis and it's very sturdy that can hold a lot of uh, tomatoes. And for this raised bed, I call tomato patch. And guess what? I planted over 10 tomato plants in this bed and this one, I would say uh, maybe four by six or four by seven uh, and I use the trellis arch as you guys see there those are the old ones so I put it on the back of the garden and tomato will climb on that arch uh, a couple of tomato variety and then I have more that will climb around that sunflower stalk and the trellis on the back and then the one in the front I'm using this black trellis again. I have a lot. I order about a dozen for this season. Very handy. So now move on to beans. Uh, what variety of bean that I'm growing this season? I love growing beans. Uh, and this one is scarlet runner beans. You guys look at how healthy these one are. Look at the size of the leaf. So this scarlet runner beans, I'm using the tra uh, dragon fruit trellis that I build for the dragon fruit from the bottom. But since the dragon fruit are still very small and I don't want to just, you know, left the trellis unused. So this season I'm growing beans. And move over here is wing beans. Wing beans take a little longer from, you know, growing from seed to harvest. But uh, most of uh, bush bean, 
it's between 50 to 55 days from seed to harvest and for pole beans it's between 55 to 65 so that's why i love growing beans these are all pole uh, bush bean and it's growing so fast um, and over here i am growing fava beans i love fava beans if you harvest the young pot you can grill just salt peppers grill uh, and if you want to mix a little bit of parmesan cheese it's also delicious or you just can eat the pot like the beans inside it's really delicious i love it okay for this bed i'm growing a lot of beans as well i grow a lot of uh, vegetable in here i have beans i have eggplants i have uh, a few of peppers so these are all pole beans it's the dragon tongue beans and over here all soybeans i grow them really close together so they can hold each other because this one i don't need trellis uh, but it kind of like they have a skinny stem so when you grow them packed together they kind of help each other like you know hold each other in place um and i love soybeans growing soybeans at home uh, such a rewarding my kids love it too and you can freeze them <laughs> Uh, very easily and now it start to drop the seed pot All right, so let's talk about dragon fruits This is one of everybody's favorite plants and I love them so much. I've been growing dragon fruit for about eight nine years now and um, I have a couple videos uh, All about dragon fruit especially for you beginner. Uh, I will link all the videos in uh, the description so the dragon fruits they love sun it's not the kind of cactus uh, family that live in desert but it's a subtropical plants so um i got a lot of you guys asking about uh the sunlight because since i grow uh, against the wall so when it's still very small uh it's received a lot of uh, a part of morning sun and some afternoon sun but now since it grow above the fan it's received all day sun and they love a lot of sun and since i don't have frost date uh the dragon fruit growing well and survive the winter but if you live in a colder climate and you want to grow dragon fruit you maybe grow in pot that you can move around so during winter you can move it, move them indoor or the sun room or maybe greenhouse uh, and this one is cucumbers also grow in container using this trellis look at that these are japanese cucumbers and it's very delicious my two favorite cucumbers that i always grow every single year japanese cucumbers and persian cucumbers uh, they are delicious and look at this one this is butternut squash that i'm growing on the let it hang on the grid trellis and this one is the uh, tromboncino or rampicante squash also growing in container using this trellis it need water the soil kind of dry um, and then over here i have the arbors i love this arbor so much mr urban garden bill uh, last year we have two uh, in the garden and i have cucumbers and sunflowers i have the grid trellis again back there back there and this is another uh, dragon fruit this one i'm not growing in container i grow directly in ground and i will let them you know hang on this arbor and the sunflowers on the back growing really tall and this is magnolia sunflowers you guys it taller than the, the arbor and the arbor is six feet and this sunflower probably 10 feet now and it's not even produced uh, flowers yet and i have yeah cucumbers here too and these are persian cucumbers and then i have a few peppers you guys can see that every single inches are packed i grow corns around that area very close together and they will grow well around this area and i have some peppers in the front no space wasted in my garden even though along this fence i have kale some kale some tomato 
and I just sew a whole bunch of cilantro so there is no space to waste here and I have more along the fan and I have cute, uh, tomato in container there and move along over here I have um, lime tree uh, lemongrass very close together and all of these are flowers iceberg roses uh, and I also grow some corn a couple of corns here and a few here <laughs> It's all packed guys, all packed. In the next couple months, those corn will grow taller and it make the space fill up uh, with all plants. And over here I have a lot of sunflowers. I should not grow too close together for this one because it produces smaller head than they normally do. Uh, because this is giant sunflowers and mammoths, they produce big head. But since I grow so close together, they produce smaller head and move along to my herbs garden you can see that this little space I can grow 12 pots of herbs I mean I try to maximize the space as much as possible so I order these uh, metal rack and I also will link it for you guys and then this uh, container and this container is um, either 8 or 10 inches container and you can find it at dollar store, uh, Japanese store uh, or maybe a dollar tree they, uh, they have and if not you can also order from online and over here I have uh, passion fruit that also grow in container and let it crawl on this arbor. I will use the wired, uh, you know, put it cross between the patio and the arbors for the uh, passion fruit to climb. And then if you move along over here, I have a few pots that I use the trellis again. I have this trellis a lot in, in the garden. And growing raspberry, uh, I have no space to grow except container and I love to grow raspberry and blueberry uh, I will make a uh, post another video just for uh, growing raspberry and blueberry uh, for you guys in maybe in a, a, a few days and these are blackberry they start to their yeah, fruit and flowers are beautiful so I saved this one for last because uh, growing squash, zucchini, and cucumbers vertically, that's my favorite things. So I will show you guys step by step on how to grow squash and zucchini uh, vertically. Look at this area. It's so packed and, if, and I prune a lot. I prune like a, almost every week. And I'm using this trellis to also grow a couple. Uh, I grow some cucumbers and um, another of one of my favorites is cucamelons uh, it's like a tiny cucumbers and watermelons and it have a hint of like you know a sour a little bit or this one they call uh, Mexican cucumbers and it's so cute it's like a tiny watermelons and I love to harvest and eat with tahini very refreshing and I have some pole beans over here so just like I told you guys, I ignore all the spacing rule. Uh, I grow them vertically. And if you guys see, these are yellow zucchini. All right, so let's start pruning. First, put the steak, or you can use T-post or any side of steak you would like to use. For me, I used this one last year, and surprisingly, it's hold up really well. So when you steak, you stay close to the plant. So when pruning, prune all the bottom leaf. I leave only a few on the top and the way I prune, I prune from the bottoms up. And as the plant grow and you keep pruning, but when you cut the leaf, make sure you cut all the way to the base of the stalk. You don't want to leave any hole because there's maybe some insect or bird can leave and can cause damage to your plants. 
I'm going to harvest this one right now and this one called yellow zucchini perfect size to harvest and I will prune some more a couple more leaves uh, on the bottom uh, I'll only leave about a few on the top after pruning and clean out around the wine area then tie the wine to the stake I'm using the plant tape uh, don't use any like wired or small string because as the plant grow bigger it might cut off uh, your plants so I love using this tape you can find it at Home Depot or online Amazon I'm sure they have it and when you tie, tie loosely. Don't tie too tight because you want the, the stalk to grow bigger. And for the leaf, right now I tie them because uh, I want them to grow straight. And later on, you can untie uh, the leaf and let it grow naturally. As the plant continue to grow, every few days you come outside and continue to prune the bottom leaf because it's allow all the energy to focus on the new growth and then produce some more flowers and some fruit. And after you prune, just tie along the stake. And by growing zucchini and squash vertically, not only have you maximize the space, but also have the plant to receive more sunlight promoting some airflow to prevent powdery mildew. As you guys know that powdery mildew is the major problem with squash and zucchini. And as well as the flower will be up there and it is wide open and it also has the pollinator to spot the flowers a lot easier. So let's check this out oh my gosh you guys look at how much space we have now and you can grow lettuces and spinach or any herbs you want to have maximize the space in this bed uh, I will be planting some more basil and holy basil over here and the swash and zucchini the plant will grow taller 
Last year, it climbed almost to the top of this trellis. Okay, so I want to tell you one story. So last year, I got a lot of attention on this mushroom steak. So during summer, my kids running around outside a lot and I just don't like the steak pointing up. So I was going to get like the tissue to wrap around uh, the top of the steak. But then I have this mushroom that I bought from Dollar Tree uh, a couple years ago and it have hole on the bottom. So I just tried to put it on the steak and it fit perfectly. So cute. And it went viral and uh, I start to see a lot of garden using the steak and the mushroom. Uh, you also can order from Amazon too. Uh, so like from at the 99 cent store or Dollar Tree, uh, they have it. I love this so much you guys and look at the fruit it's up there now not laying on the ground and for these three squash that grow along this wood box right here I will not using the steak I will let it grow longer and hang off the wood box alright guys so that's it for today video and I hope you enjoy and if you have any question at all please drop in the comment below and I will get back to you as soon as possible and thank you so much for watching.